Good day, and thanks for your interest in Terra Energy and Resource Technologies, Inc., or Terra for short. My name is Jim Reardon, and I'm a big believer in Terra's capabilities. I'm a longstanding shareholder in Terra, and my company, Arista Capital Group, has performed investment banking and financial advisory services for Terra in the past. Currently, we're helping Terra with its business development, and Terra has asked that we produce this presentation. It covers the oil and gas exploration, exploration services offered by Terra, with a focus on Terra's remote sensing technologies, which are called STEP. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get started. I hope to finish in about 50 minutes. Okay, with Terra, we are talking about almost a dozen breakthrough technologies and data sets, which as far as we know, you cannot get from anyone else. Terra is a publicly traded company and has been operating since 2005. However, the technologies predate the company by decades and have been applied in hundreds of cases over the last 30 years. Terra is based in Midtown Manhattan in the United States. It also has offices in Moscow, Russia, Kiev, Ukraine, and Santiago, Chile. It has about 20 employees, most of which are geotechnical specialists with advanced degrees and years of experience. In fact, the technical team has over 500 years of experience in research development and application of their various methods. These technologies were invented and developed by scientists associated with the Russian military and top universities in Moscow and Kiev. In short, Terra finds hydrocarbon and mineral anomalies, which have been proven to be excellent exploration targets. Terra pre-stages regular geological, geophysical, and geochemical methods so that you don't waste money looking for oil in low probability zones. In virgin, frontier, or underexplored areas with drilling, where drilling information is not available, there simply is no other method that produces so much for so little. Terra has helped governments and many companies, both large and small, find oil and gas and minerals all over the world. The company's ideology integrate and superpose multiple independent methods, data sets, and results, and you will dramatically improve the probability for commercial success. So what does Terra provide? Well, we're going to deliver a report with hundreds of pages of data, maps, and analysis, but in the end, it boils down to one map with contours, drilling locations, and pay depths. We'll tell you all the areas we like, we don't like, and why. At the end, you'll feel very comfortable with our results and logic. You'll have the confidence to spend and move forward on your exploration program. We won't spend a lot of time on Terra's success rates. They're impressive and probably a bit shocking, uh, especially compared to the norm. But these results are real and we can prove them. And while not all data on early projects is available from pre-Terra days in the 80s and, and 90s, we do have records on more than 100 projects. This is more than enough to affirm that Terra is not a black box technology company. It has customers and a lengthy work history, and is working every day on customer projects. Terra has proven that these service offerings are high value and should be a core component for any work program for early or inter intermediate stage exploration. Certainly, we have references, and, and you know we can provide those on, on request. Here are the five Terra service offerings. <clears throat> Step finds hydrocarbon anomalies in depth using satellite photos, digi digital elevation maps, topo maps, and other data. Step Express is to high-grade large areas and identify anomalies. And Full Step would provide detailed modeling on such targets that have, have been found in Step Express or through other methods uh, where cross-sections would be provided and uh, really pay, estimated pay zones, depth, uh, drilling location, sometimes a little water contact, uh, sometimes direct detection uh, of, of the signature of hydrocarbons in the subsurface. Naturally Adsorbed Gas Survey, or NAGS, finds hydrocarbon anomalies using what we call adsorbed gases as, a, as opposed to absorbed. Uh, it basically relies on the theory or the model, uh, which, which has been proving with very deep drilling, has been proven that a background gas field it goes all the way down to you know depths as, as far as 20 to 25, 30,000 feet. This background gas field 
uh, will change as it passes through uh, particular types of reservoirs or, or, or mineral uh, uh, deposits. So, um, you know, basically what we're talking about is adsorbed gases over time adhere to rock structure via van der Waals forces. These are extremely strong bonds. Hence, gas ratios in surface samples are stable and accurate, but they will vary when the gas field has passed through a deposit. So uh, NAGS finds hydrocarbon anomalies over hydrocarbon deposits via surface rock samples. It's essentially a direct detection of hydrocarbon, uh, hydrocarbons through these surface samples, a world-class geochem method. Seismic, uh, or, or SciView Seismic Locator, SVSL, uh, is a very interesting technology uh, that uh, identifies zones of abnormally high fracturing, which is obviously key for high production rates. Um, that requires, of course, geophone mobilization, and the same would, would uh, be required for SLEC, uh, Seismic Location Emission Centers, which is a passive seismic uh, method. And uh, it's basically scanning for a, uh, a wave signature that relates to oil, gas, and water uh, that can be distinguished. And this is a direct detection of hydrocarbons as well, um, and also is able to track the movement of fluids uh, in the subsurface in real time over time. We can't go into uh, detail on these other methods today. We're, we're going to have uh, a full presentation just covering step but we certainly can provide you with more information upon request. And we do have a, a similar video on the NAGS that we would encourage you to view um, at another time. OK. In order to talk about STEP, Terra STEP remote sensing services uh, and their value, we, we really need some context. For that, we need to talk about the oil exploration business in general as it stands today. Let's face it, the easy targets are gone. We now need to drill deeper and try to hit smaller targets. I know there's a lot of excitement today about shale plays. Uh, you know, this area is booming. But we all know these reservoirs are expensive to drill and deplete very quickly. Plus, uh, you know, land can be, uh, once these, these uh, are identified, uh, you know, it can be very expensive to get into them. Terra's methods uh, can apply to shale plays in terms of trying to understand structure and fall plants, et cetera, which would be important uh, for directional drilling. But for this presentation, let's focus on the concept of vertical plays. I mean, let's face it, nothing beats a good old-fashioned vertical well, an exploratory area where you can get the land cheap, uh, gushing 500, 1,000, 2,000 or more barrels a day. So uh, what are the traditional solutions for underexplored areas, uh, for frontier areas, virgin areas? Well, geology and geophysical studies. But this is expensive to run in large frontier areas. And though these method, methods have high value, or these methods have, have some value, we all know they fall short of the mark. I mean, let's face it, there's a high failure rate. Why? Well, other than, other than surface geology uh, and observation, we're basically talking about the same data set the reflective, reflective wave. No matter, no matter how you slice it, you run into the same problem. You cannot get away from it, the attenuation of the wave signal. It certainly has limitations. It can only tell us so much, just structural information, basically. There's no predictive capability in terms of the presence of hydrocarbons, will the water contact, etc. In many cases, seismic is blind. Salt plays, stratigraphic plays, complicated geology, steeply, steeply dipping folds, basalts, etc. So it's worth repeating. Although it's the number one tool used in exploration today, seismic has a lot of limitations. We're running blind with seismic. We expect to fail seven, eight, nine out of ten times. These are really lousy odds with such big money at stake. So something else is needed to reduce the risk, and that's where Terra comes in. Terra's remote sensing methods are far more accurate, take a fraction of the time, and cost a lot less than geophysics. They're fully remote and discreet, and certainly environmentally friendly. 
as you'll learn, Terra's step remote sensing technology is not your typical conventional remote sensing method. You'll probably, you probably have looked at remote sensing before. Generally speaking, conventional remote, remote sensing is not a big value add either. Stuff like thermal mapping, oil seeds detection, geobotanical anomalies, etc. We all know that conventional remote sensing has some benefits, but it's generally of low value. So what's so special about Terra's methods? Well, Terra is different. Its step remote sensing method delivers things that no one else can. It finds hydrocarbon anomalies, structure, depth. It estimates hydrocarbon volume. It even recommends drilling locations. It can show oil to water contact in some cases. Step finds signatures of hydrocarbons on the surface, no matter how deep the pay zones. I know it sounds hard to believe, but we can quantify it through results on hundreds of projects. And while we would recommend that you get as much data as you can before investing in a license, drilling, etc., we do have customers who have drilled on Terra's recommendations alone without geophysical surveys, and they've been very successful. Many old timers dismiss remote sensing as theoretical or lacking in sufficient evidence in terms of being of, of value. Well, you know what? In the case of many, many such methods, they are correct. Moreover, new remote sensing guys typically are very specialized in remote sensing and often lack geological field experience to match their technical or technology skills. But the fact remains, despite a lot of skepticism from traditionalists, there are many credible studies from highly reputable professionals that show alternative methods add a lot of needed value to the field model. Remote sensing and alternative geochemical methods add independent data sets. How can we ignore them when we're drilling commercial failures more than 80% of the time in exploratory areas? Terra specialists, fortunately, bring old and new school together. Terra specialists are geologists and geophysicists who, for decades, have integrated remote sensing and other methods with traditional geological and geophysical applications. In a word, they're ahead of their time. Long before Terra proper was formed in 2005, its specialists were applying their methods in the field, integrating them with conventional data sets, and refining their interpretive abilities based on real, real results from real projects. So Terra is able to offer real geological solutions, remote sensing, and other methods. This is not technology under development. This is technology that is seasoned, it works, and Terra is working for customers every day, providing tremendous value. So how specifically can Terra help you? Well, STEP can help in early and intermediate stage explora exploration on underexplored areas of any size. It generally takes three to four months or a little longer on very large areas. The remote methods naturally get around any access limitations or mobilization issues. Terra can handle any terrain onshore, including jungle cover, and even offshore. It handles difficult, complicated geology and mountainous areas all the time. We can, access, we can assess the viability of your investment even before you acquire the license. Why pay for something before you know its perspective? Economically, STEP makes a whole lot of sense whether in nominal cost and results delivered compared to seismic and savings on seismic by avoiding seismic in low potential areas or by me measured by fewer dry holes. We'll tell, tell you the areas which are prospective and those which are not, and you will save a lot of money by not investing, running, or buying seismic or drilling in areas where there is no oil. And certainly for governments, we can help them optimize their mineral license tender and field development strategies. Establishing prospectivity for government blocks so as to attract the best companies, accelerate field exploration and development, and compressing the whole process from decades down to a few years. These are great goals that Terra can support for governments and their petroleum and mineral agencies. In intermediate exploration, a lot of work comes from people running into trouble with their field model. They're drilling into areas that should produce, and they're dry. Seismic not, is not enough many times. We get the call from companies that need a different data set, or maybe to confirm a drilling location. 
from small entrepreneurs to large intermediates and all the way up to majors, Terra has helped many industry players. For example, Terra just got a call from Kuwait's national oil company, Kuwait Oil Company, obviously a serious major oil company, because they could not figure out a field that they were working in. Even with all their state-of-the-art technology and hundreds of world-class geologists, they needed help with their model. The project's in motion right now as of mid-May 2013. Now let's talk about STEP in a little more detail. All we need to produce a proposal is the area of interest coordinates. Again, STEP Express is for early exploration and is ideal for mapping large or underexplored areas, expecting scales of 1 to 300,000 to 1 to 25,000. It's applicable onshore and offshore, and it helps to understand structure to high grade, low, to high grade and low grade uh, a given area, to give a second opinion on failure decode complexity, land acquisition, retention planning, uh, or release planning, to overcome access issues, and certainly to rank targets. Compared with the conventional approach, expect to reduce your exploration time by 70 to 80 percent and reduce your cost by 80 to 90 percent. Again, all we need, uh, even for full step, is the area of interest coordinates. Uh, with full step, we're talking about detailed mapping and modeling for specific targets identified in Step Express or via other methods. And we would map to scales of 1 to 10,000, even to 1 to 5,000. We use it to understand structural controls, faults, folds, anomalies, and uh, the like that are associated with hydrocarbons or specific minerals. Full step would pre-stage more expensive conventional G&G methods to reduce wasteful spending on low potential targets. In the end, it provides an investment quality report with savings of a lot of time and a lot of money. All right, so what's inside step? We like to call it a tasty club sandwich because there are so many methods built into one exploration service. As noted previously, step is a suite of remote sensing and analytical tools with multiple innovative methods. Each method has its own dedicated team of PhDs and geoscientists. This is their life's work. It's important to note that this is not groupthink. The respective teams are not even in the same offices. These are independent data sets processed by unique analytical tools and interpreted by unique teams specialists. As you would intuit, the limitations of one method are compensated for by the strengths of the others. Terra integrates all methods and all available data to reach its conclusions. This integration and superposition of multiple methods is the genius of Terra. By integrating many methods and identifying areas of agreement, a high level of confidence is developed in the field model. And while the mainstream oil and gas industry has been, sl been slow to embrace these methods, obviously because they're a very different paradigm, which you'll find out you know, a little bit more about in coming slides, we would say and we would state uh, very confidently that Terra's power and relevance is beyond question. As Terra's CEO, Dimitri Vilbon, likes to say, this is really just good old-fashioned geology aided by supercomputing power satellite imagery, and some innovative algorithms. In the end, Terra delivers a data-packed, actionable report with strong supporting analysis for its conclusions on the area of interest. The first method used in STEP is geodynamic analysis. To have a sense of the concept, think mantle plume theory. This method provides a different view of tectonics and interior dynamics. It states there is a discrete order to the subsurface and its processes and the effects produced near the surface as a result. Imagine these plumes coming from the mantle and pushing with tremendous energy and pressure into the crust. What is natural to, to expect is that, that uh, this cause, this energy cause, will certainly produce effects. We liken it to the ripples caused by a stone tossed into a pond except think bottom-up instead of top-down. Geodynamic theory says that these ripples show up as circular structures in surface relief. 
the diameter of these circles can be so large, such as on a global scale, that the circular structures appear as straight lines. They also might manifest all the way down to localized examples in very small circles. Regardless, they are the surface expression of fracture pathways traveling to the depths. Prim a primary concept of the model is the regular, uh, regular divisibility of the Earth's lithosphere from, from which a geometrical framework can be developed from surface features. Structural features, uh, surface features, uh, and their structures relate to deep tectogens and the structural pathways which connect such deep tectonic systems to near surface structure mineralization. Terra reverse engineers from surface features to the controlling systems. Decades of application show prospectivity is related to tectogen nodes or fl of, of fluid or energy discharge. And these intersections of the resulting structures which appear on the surface. This is all pretty intuitive and a typical or you know any geologist worth his salt would would agree but but geodynamic analysis provides important predictive power with ma mathematical reliability that ordinary geological ob observation can't supply. These systems are what we call the mineral kitchens and delivery systems of the world. Continuing with this concept, major mineralogenic belts are confined to very specific areas. This is a known fact. It's not arbitrary. It's not chaotic. There's a discrete, predetermined process controlling mineral deposition zones tied to these mantle plume nodes, if you will, that we can calculate for exploration. In this slide, we have geodynamic analysis in action in southern Argentina. You may be asking, well, you know, just what are these lines and these lattices? Well, they're basically deep-seated faults or deeply permeable zones that penetrate from deep horizons in the, in the lower crust all the way up to the surface due to energy and fluid release. You get a fracture pattern, and you get these primary, secondary, and tertiary effects, kind of like an upside-down Christmas tree. The model is fit onto the area of interest using major relief elements and production history as coordinates. We're very encouraged when we find a system like this. Let's see if my pointer can uh, show here. We're very encouraged when we find a system like this in or near the license block uh, because it will suggest prospectivity. So we go from continental to regional all the way down to local scale, zooming in. Many years of application and observation show that prospectivity is confined to the intersections of circular and polyhedral structures. So this is geodynamic analysis. The next step method is morphometric analysis. Morphometry finds uplifts and anticlines. If you Google morphometry, you'll see hundreds of search results. Any geologist or geophysicist will tell you that tectonics drive surface relief forming processes. It's a primary postulate. But today, oil men rely too much on seismic, in our opinion, and ignore important opportunities to use surface data. By computerizing the inputs and outputs, Terra has made morphometry a viable and important tool for modern exploration. Three key surface feature concepts are used in morphometry. Erosion, denudation, and digital elevation map data. The main objective of morphometry is to turn back the hands of time and create paleogeographic maps which show the surface going back in time. This allows us to find uplifts, anticlines, and domes. <clears throat> for example, uh, down here in uh, graphic number four, we in this structure. This can inform uh, many things uh, in terms of prospectivity and what's happening to structure over time. So we convert digital elevation maps into stream order maps, which are your erosion bases, and then into watershed lines, and then into catchment basins. We'll call it the source data, and it's all derived from digital elevation information. This data is then converted into paleogeographic levels. Here we have paleogeographic levels running from shallow level 2 all the way to deep level 9. This is done mathematically and very accurately, 
and the result is a map of surface relief in different ages. With this, you can do a number of things. You can set threshold values, build isopack maps, find different features, for example, sand channels, and of course, the uplifts and anticlines, all of which will clarify the geologic picture. You can also observe changes through time, as I mentioned before. So the main result of morphometry is, morphometry is to find anticlines, various closures, which are important to finding hydrocarbons. Here in this case, we have conditions pointing to an uplift. By, by combining base level maps and local residual relief maps and observing attributes in the isolines, we can dis distinguish the anticlinal features. Final result shows anticline shallow, mid-range, and deep. <clears throat> you see the dark is the, is the deep level, and then the lighter versions are the shallower. <clears throat> um, it's important to note here that uh, in cases where you have the dark and the lighter colored, uh, this would be an inherited uh, uplift, whereas here you're going to have a deep, uh, a deep anticline that is not going to have any evidence on the surface, and this would be a unique structure. We obviously see a lot going on here. There are some very large structures here, and uh, we, we, we did point out this area is something that merits further study uh, on behalf of this customer. <clears throat> so uh, this is Tara's version of morphometry. <clears throat> it's, uh, it's a very helpful tool in, in terms of understanding structure. The next method is paleo-reconstruction, which leverages <clears throat> or rides on <clears throat> or rides on morphometry's results. Paleo-reconstruction helps to understand how subsurface geomedia moves over time and what this means for mineral deposition. It converts paleogeographic maps into paleoflows of geomedia movement. It's helpful to understand uh, and to identify deposition centers, obviously, which become sources, my HC hydrocarbon sources, migration pathways, and or endpoints or traps. This slide is trying to visually convey the process of paleo reconstruction from satellite data, data and images, uh, digital elevation maps, and topo maps, and Terra's proprietary algorithm, the controlling structures of the subsurface uh, the controlling structures of the subsurface this thing, the computer's hanging here. Um, Controlling structures of the subsurface are uh, discerned, and the sources and pathways and deposition points are mapped. Try to get this thing to go. Oh, here we go. So, um, what we've got here is um, when you look at this isoline map here, you know, a typical topo map, it's not going to tell you a whole heck of a lot um, about what's in the subsurface. It's not going to help you to find oil and gas. So without additional data as a geologist, you're basically lost in terms of the presence of hydrocarbons. But by converting the data into paleo flows, a valuable uh, picture emerges. Uh, and we can understand uh, points of trapping and uh, uh, migration, uh, migration pathways. Um, we can understand a whole lot about subsurface prospectivity from this data. Remember, your 2,000 meter horizon in the subsurface was the actual surface at one time, you know, many, many millions of years ago. So we're dry, trying to reconstruct paleo flows <coughs> from these isoline-based maps. Why? Because they're key to understanding the dynamic of geomedium, which in turn informs on the migration and trapping of hydrocarbons. We see depressions, depot centers, paleo deltas, lacustrine features, faults, etc. 
Because paleo flows are not uniform, we can determine genetic dependency of different features. Note the differently colored flows. In this, in this next slide, we continue with the paleo reconstruction process. We see paleo deltas, depot centers, and a depression. Bifurcation points. Um, bifurcation points are important because we see how a depression or a depot center starts as a low, fills with sediment, and becomes a high, creating a bifurcation point, which basically points to potentially you know, areas of better pay and or trapping. All these things are not going to be visible to the naked eye, even for the best geologists. But put through the lens of paleo reconstruction, important conclusions can be drawn. Now, by running paleo reconstruction on different morphometric base levels, we can see some interesting things. We've created a virtual stratigraphic column without the benefit of seismic or drilling in this area of Argentina. We can understand depot centers and HV hydrocarbon migration directions. As an example, this helps to understand the target Spring Hill sands in this area that pinch out and sit on top of the basement between the basement and the MBRO. Um, uh, these, these, these horizons here. Um, these obviously wouldn't be visible you know, to seismic um, because it's, it's basically stratigraphic. Okay, here's a quick case study. Uh, in the northern Caucasus of Russia, here's an example of paleo reconstruction. Uh, this slide shows the customer's contour map and field model. There are a few producers and a lot of dry holes. All these, these guys. All these guys are dry. So the operator wanted help because he couldn't understand what was going on. Here's the paleo flow model represented by this amoeba-like structure superimposed on the geologist's map and field model. Paleo reconstruction arrived at a very different field model and showed the structural highs and pathways where hydrocarbons would migrate and trap. It clearly shows that the failed wells were outside the paleo reconstruction defined, defined structures. So you see all these wells that are, a lot of them were just on the edge. Um, but these are all dry. And your production is right on the center of these, of these amoeba structures, these paleo reconstructed flows. So these obviously would be areas that would be very interesting to examine, you know, with further exploration. Conventional uh, remote sensing is, uh, is the next method in, uh, in the step sandwich. Um, it's a, it's, a all, it's, it's a method that's included in STEP, but it's a very minor part of what Terra does for its customers. The usual applications can be performed, as noted here, linear minute analysis, thermal mapping, indicator minerals, botanical indicators, etc. But I would add that Terra has also innovated uh, a little bit in conventional remote sensing by combining it with uh, artificial neural nets and mathematics. And Terra has created something it calls a simulated hydrocarbon index. Using aster data and artificial neural nets, it creates uh, a simulation of a high resolution map. In cases where either it's too expensive or the high resolution data is just not available, it will run these, uh, these uh, uh, hydrocarbon index uh, methods and it will ultimately find you know, areas like this, which correspond, um, uh, um, which correspond to method. I'm sorry, in, in what I am, this is not conventional rule sensing, this is geo, <laughs> geoinformatics. Um, I got ahead of myself. So um, what geoinformatics is, is uh, it's a well-defined uh, and well-developed tool which processes large amounts of data uh, to find patterns. We're feeding all the productive and failed well data in the area into the model to train it. And then we verify it on an area with prospective and non-prospective sites. Once trained and confirmed, we can take the, the, uh, the neural net to 
unexplored areas nearby to identify comparable zones of prospectivity which would merit further study, such as this green area here. Here's our conventional remote sensing. Uh, the next method and step, uh, as I said, uh, small part and uh, the usual stuff can be done, but step, step uh, and Terra have innovated in this area to create the simulated hydrocarbon index, which can be very interesting to find uh, sort of virtual oil seeps and predict oil seeps um, as a result of its uh, uh, artificial neural nets that are used. The next method is structure metric analysis. I would say it is a key step method. It quantifies stress on the surface that is tied to stress generating bodies in the subsurface. We know two bodies of different acoustic density which are in, in contact and under pressure produce stress fields due to mechanical and Newtonian forces and that these stress fields radiate and travel. Over millions of years, such will leave a signature on the surface. Here's an example of structure metric uh, analysis and, and its result in the graphic on the left. And on the right is a rendering to show how stress deformation may travel and show on the surface. To get a better idea, an extremely obvious example of stress is a collision of two plates. Stress builds up, ultimately produces seismic events, mountains, faulting, etc. So a similar form of stress occurs with the contact of two acoustically different bodies in the subsurface. Terra scientists have figured out a way to measure the stress on the surface despite much, it being a much more subtle manifestation of such, such stress as would be the case, for example, with hydrocarbon saturated rock against a metamorphic bed. The postulate is that these are low power emissions that have effects on the surface only after millions of years, perhaps density changes. But fortunately for us as explorers, hydrocarbon saturated zones are very different acoustically from host rock and do in fact create a unique signature that we can detect on the surface with structure metric analysis. Here we see how Terra quantifies spectral manifestations of subsurface features from data sourced by satellite images and convert into stress fields on the surface. Uh, it basically picks up major and minor features in the surface uh, and is able to create a cross-section of such uh, from the satellite data. So in addition to picking up structural manifestations, our algorithm also shows the spectral signature of hydrocarbon saturated rocks and other minerals, oil to water contact zones, and even the direct detection of the presence of hydrocarbons in some cases. <clears throat> it obviously will show all the major faults and also the minor faults. So cross-referencing with seismic is done all the time. Here's a typical result of structure metric analysis. The customer wanted a structure contact, a contour map in the area. Several structures were defined. In the next slide, we see the cross sections. In this case, the geologist provided seismic to Terra only after Terra had provided its depth study. The geologist confirmed that seismic tied perfectly to Terra's structure contour maps. Later, it was drilled and they got good production from the well. So this is a very important tool. And finally, we have the last remote sensing component to this depth sandwich, spectrometry. In our opinion, it's one of, uh, one of the tastiest uh, components to this depth sandwich. It relies on what we call geoinformational anomalies, circular structures that we find in satellite images taken of the surface. We call it spectrometry, but again, it's our own special and proprietary brand of spectrometry which incorporates special algorithms which are applied to spectral data to find these geoinformational anomalies related to hydrocarbons or other minerals. It's a very important tool for us and it's received the highest scientific recognition in Russia. It was developed over 15 years at a government sponsored 15,000 square kilometer dedicated testing site. This was sponsored of course by the, by the, uh, the Russian government. They basically would uh, run, run the model, drill it, confirm, run the model, drill it, refine, run the model, drill it, confirm. Um, so over time, uh, 
this model was refined to a very high level. These circular structures that are found obviously are the manifestation of some subsurface process. Few informational anal an anomalies are theorized to be the result of passive seismic waves stemming from hydrocarbons vibrating below in hydrocarbon ho host rock. If you plan to stick a dynamite 100 feet down in the ground and trigger it, it will obviously send waves to the surface, which will create a pattern of deformation or density change on the surface. Same thing happens with hydrocarbons, but in, in a much more subtle way. With no explosion per se, but due instead to passive seismic emissions from the Earth's core and also from the influence of the solar and lunar gravitational forces, microbursts occur daily. All right, my computer is hanging here. Um, what, uh, what I wanted to show in this slide is um, that as these circular uh, structures manifest on the surface, we can tie them together with uh, by connecting these dots. As I said, you may be aware that the Earth actually expands and contracts slightly under the influence of solar and lunar gravitational forces, a kind of inhaling and exhaling. Other processes may also be at work. Uh, computers hanging. Sorry about that. Other processes may also be at work, but it seems that hydrocarbon saturated zones are emitting energy to the surface and over millions of years create circular anomalies which show up as geoinformational anomalies. Finding these circles is not easy. In order to find them, it takes a lot of computing horsepower. We need to test each and every pixel in the spectral image of the area of interest. When all these circles line up around a center point, we have something. We exhaust all possibilities to see if we really have a hydrocarbon anomaly. It's pretty amazing, but the algorithm is able to filter out the irrelevant noise and zeroes in on the specific patterns that we seek, which are these patterns that we see here. And importantly, very importantly, we have found that these anomalies are three-dimensional and descend to the, to the hydrocarbon zones, or the mineral zones, uh, which are the emitting zones, if you will, in the form of an ice cream cone with legs, uh, with legs on the bottom that always have an angle of 72 degrees. So, um, you know, for example, right here, this, this would be our ice cream cone. And this angle right here is always going to be 72 degrees. So as a result, if we find a circle and we're able to confirm it by testing all these pixels and we're able to find this circle, we can go down at 72 degrees and we can find our pay zone depth. Through hundreds of applications, uh, through hundreds of applications, we know that this works. Running this model, if there's oil and gas in the subsurface, you'll find an anomaly, which is the expression of this reservoir in the subsurface. To find our contours, as I said, we simply connect these dots, and we've got our contour anomaly, which corresponds to our subsurface deposit. Spectrometry is able to work in areas that seismic blind, deep salt, basalt, etc. It works onshore or offshore. These circles will actually appear on top of water. And it estimates resource type, depth, thickness, and volume. Very special method. Here you see a cross section. Uh, we're running through this section of this anomaly. And we see we don't have much of a trap here. We've got dispersion. So you know, we wouldn't recommend this as a target because, uh, because of this dispersion. The result of spectrometry looks something like this. We see these anomalies, you know, and here we've blown them up, and we see how these anomalies can be differentiated. 
and uh, we can break them into sections, greater or lesser intensity. And then more, you know, you know, as importantly, we see by using our rule of 72 here, we're able to estimate our pay zones up here on top. Very neat. So that's spectrometry in a nutshell. Now let's put it all together. The end result of step is to put the club sandwich together with all the ingredients, slapping together the ham, cheese, turkey, lettuce, tomato, bread, etc. We integrate or superpose all methods precisely onto one map and look for agreement in prospectivity. If we see phenomena identified by several different methods, we have to acknowledge we have something. Something is going on here. You know, for example, in, uh, in Structure 9, uh, we've got st uh, stuff indicated by spectrometry, by structure metric. Um, we've got, uh, you know, uh, right here, the location of the, uh, drilling, uh, the, the drilling location recommended by Terra. Um, and we've got agreement with, you know, several methods in a number of these different structures. Okay, here in slide uh, 43, it's another, another example of any integration of step results. Let's consider Anomaly 10, which is right here. It's another project that was done in Argentina. We have two purple anomalies, which are based on geoinformation or artificial neural nets, which is the strict math method. We've got two pink anomalies um, right here. Uh, which are based on structure metric. We've got one uh, good-sized yellow anomaly, which is uh, the geoinformational anomalies based on proprietary spectrometry, the ice cream cone tool, if you will. So when we see this kind of agreement, it can explicitly mean to us that we have a compelling evidence of a strong exploration target. This is your target here, and a number of them have been identified. This one here, interestingly enough, uh, you see, does not have any of these dark circles, um, these round circles, which are your morphometric anticlines. So this would be a stratigraphic play here, where we don't have uh, any type of structural, uh, structural evidence. So some very interesting uh, targets were identified here. Um, and also, interestingly, you know, a lot of area was, um, you know, discarded. So. Um, this was a very large license block, and the customer was able to release a lot of land and a lot of uh, work program commitment and just focus in on these targets which we've identified. All right. Now let's run through some examples of STEP uh, in some other areas. Um, this is an example of structure metric analysis in Indonesia, onshore, 4,000 square kilometers. No seismic was available. Terra did run uh, uh, all of its step methods, did a lot of work, but importantly was able to delineate one structure, which you see here with a cross section on the right showing a fault system uh, right here um, and a recommended drilling location and an estimated uh, depth uh, and pay at 1,900 meters. Uh, Terra liked this drilling location because it thought that it would avoid any drilling complications. This has been drilled and no seismic has been run yet to our knowledge, so we're still waiting for uh, some confirmation. Here's a full step for onshore Sierra Leone, I'm sorry, offshore Sierra Leone, a project done for Petrobras as part of a combined two and a half million dollar order. You see how Terra converts 2D maps up here on the top to uh, cross-section, uh, 3D uh, is part of its modeling process, uh, what we see here. Uh, we've got uh, pay zones uh, in three areas. And uh, as a background in this area, um, again, offshore Sierra Leone, several dry holes had been drilled previously in the 80s and 90s. Uh, the area was thought to be uh, you know, basically not prospective. Uh, but Terra did identify some, uh, some, some horizons where it thought that uh, there would be hydrocarbon shows. And interestingly, Anadarko drilled it in 2009 after they had acquired the field from Petrobras. 
and did get oil shows at the 5,300 to 5,500 meter level, as, uh, as predicted by Terra for this block SL4. Here's a step case study in Nevada near Railroad uh, Valley, where some of the highest oil production rates exist in the United States. Let me bring this on here. It was hanging again. Okay, Railroad Valley, uh, near Railroad Valley in Nevada. This area is complicated. The investor was considered buying in, considering buying into this block, this license, for $5 million. Uh, Terra analyzed and warned of dry holes and, uh, you know, basically characterized it as high risk, um, uh, certainly uh, of, of drilling risk, uh, given all the, the seismic, uh, all the, uh, the faulting that was going on here. Um, so uh, this project probably would have been a commercial failure. I mean, Terra estimated there might be a half million barrels of oil there, but it was so heavily faulted that um, it was certainly too risky uh, for, for what was, would potentially would be there. Here's a, a step example in Utah, which, for, um, which was for an investor who was thinking again of farming in. The prospect was offered by sponsor Pioneer Oil. Uh, pretty well-known mid-sized operator uh, in the area uh, with a good reputation. The investor backed away um, but uh, did not share Terra's report with the operator. And uh, before the operator was aware of Terra's report, he had already started to drill. And you see uh, this is the drilling location that the operator picked. This is where Terra would have advised him to be. Um, this is kind of kind of messy in here, and you've got you know you've got some faulting going on, and Tara was concerned um, that he might run into trouble in this area. Um, he did drill through the 4800 level and and did hit this gas horizon, which is predicted by Tara, uh, and then he got stuck somewhere in here. Sure enough, fished for a week, had to abandon and plug the well. What a shame. Uh, there's a really nice horizon here predicted by Terra called the Navajo Sands, and uh, this could have been, you know, a, a real nice producer. Okay. Uh, and this next example. Um, we have... Uh, Um, we, we have a step example in Kazakhstan. Uh, there were four dry holes drilled uh, before Terra was, was, uh, was called. So the customer was having trouble and, uh, and hired Terra. Uh, this is a subsalt formation sitting between two reflecting horizon, horizon, uh, reflecting horizons. So seismic wasn't able to help a whole lot. Um, after step, uh, Terra recommended changing their fifth uh, well location. Um, they were going to drill here, and Terra moved it over here. And as a result, uh, they they did get production. They got about 250 barrels a day. Not huge, but they were able to salvage, salvage some revenue on what would otherwise have been, uh, we think, a complete failure. And Baker Hughes Wells uh, well logs you know, confirmed here. Uh, here we have uh, the Deweyville project in Texas, which was a direct farm and investment opportunity for Terra. It was an expensive well. It was going to be about $10 million to drill it. And then after completion, uh, probably hitting upwards of $12 million, uh, it was going to be drilled off a barge in a swamp. Right away, Terra warned of water risk. The geologists ignored Terra. Uh, basically, they <laughs> were laughing at Terra and saying that uh, they were going to miss out, that it was going to be a huge producer. Um, but Terra just didn't like what it saw. It warned of water risk. They drilled it. Uh, water coned in. They completed it anyway. Water coned in again. They recompleted. Water coned in. And they had to plug it as a total failure. The, uh, again, Baker Hugh, Hughes uh, well logs uh, you know, confirmed Terra's prediction. Okay, so in summary, uh, you know, we've covered uh, primarily uh, STEP today. 
uh, Terra's remote sensing method. As you can see uh, from what we've covered, it's just a fantastic tool, um, you know, particularly in underexplored or virgin areas, frontier areas. Um, it's, it's just, you know, uh, completely different than conventional remote sensing in terms of the value it delivers, the geologic information that it, it can provide. Uh, so Step Express, high grading, finding anomalies, uh, you know, getting rid of uh, land that's not prospective, zeroing in on areas that are good. Full Step is modeling and, uh, and, and uh, analyzing in depth and detail uh, these targets and providing you know, drilling recommendations, uh, pro providing very solid exploration targets that we would recommend <coughs> for further study. You know, many times we would say uh, we like this target just want to run a couple of lines of seismic on it and um, maybe do some geochem do some other things to confirm uh, what step has has uh, you know provided and, or what conclusion step has reached NAGS uh, naturally adsorbed gas survey again um, we've got a separate presentation which we highly recommend you watch for this uh, it's a world-class geochem method a fantastic method to confirm findings that uh, come from STEP. Uh, we've seen they work really well together. Um, again, background gas field, when that passes through any type of hydrocarbon or other mineral deposit, uh, the gas field is going to lose or pick up something, and this is manifest very clearly in rock samples at the top. So you'll find your, your, uh, your contour lines, your oil to water contact, and your deposit. And then size view seismic uh, or side view seismic locator and seismic location emission center, two methods we just barely touched on at all. Um, again, they're for later on, um, you know, confirming uh, drilling location based on abnormally high zones of fracturing or directly detecting the presence of hydrocarbons and monitoring fluid movements in real time. Two um, very special methods as well, and we'd be more than happy to talk to you in more detail about those upon request. Well, you know, thank you again for your time. Uh, you know, I hope you found this uh, helpful today. Um, again, we would be uh, delighted to talk to you about your specific project and go into detail about how uh, Terra, you know, thinks uh, that it can help you to achieve your goals. Um, hope to hear from you soon, and bye for now.